So these are all my soldering tips for someone who's just starting. I remember when I first started making jewelry and obviously soldering is one of the first things that you have to learn. And honestly, I struggled really hard with it. And I remember thinking like, am, am I ever gonna be able to get this right? I was melting so much silver and I couldn't get my solder to flow. And I remember that happening for about a week or two. The idea that I could have quit because I couldn't get soldering down blows my mind. So if you're struggling, hopefully these tips can help you. So my name is Adriana and I started teaching myself how to silversmith two years ago and I am completely self-taught. So everything that I have learned has been from Google and YouTube. There's a lot of good stuff out there about soldering jewelry, but still I struggle. So tip number one is to remember that your solder is going to follow your flame. So wherever you direct your flame, that's where it's going to flow. So for example, if this is your circle ring and your joint is here, if your flame is pointed here, the solder that you have sitting there is going to flow back to this side and this is just going to stay open. So just remember to point your flame where you want your solder to flow. My second tip is if you're new when you're first starting, I think that solder paste is easier than working with solder chips. This is personal preference, but for me, solder paste was way easier. I think that's where all my problems were coming from was because I didn't know enough about solder chips. So I think I was using hard solder. I already didn't understand the general concepts of soldering. So then using the the wrong solder chips just made that even worse. Start out with solder paste, easy solder paste. So solder paste comes in a syringe. Uh, one is for nine karat gold and one is sterling silver, but it comes in a syringe and you just use... Some people take it directly from the syringe and put it up to the jewelry. I just push out a little bit and use my... Um, what is this called? soldering pin and I use this to flick the solder off and place it where I need to go. So soldering paste was a game changer for me. That helped me get down the basic concepts of soldering and so that leads us to our next tip which is knowing your soldering chips. So solder chips come in a few different levels. So you've got easy, medium, hard. When you first start learning, just use easy solder chips. That, that just means that it has a lower melting point. So you have to apply a lot less heat to get that solder to flow. Rather with hard solder, you have to use more heat for a more prolonged period of time and then the solder will flow. The reason why there are multiple levels of solder chips is for when you're in different stages of solder. So for example, a ring, let me find a good ring here. You have a few different components of this ring. So you have the ring band, you've got the back plate, the silver sheet, and you've got the bezel wire. I have some decorative elements of um, granulation. When you start making a ring, of course, you solder the bezel strip first. So you want to use a harder solder for that, ideally, so that whenever you solder the bezel strip on the back plate, whenever you heat up the back plate, you don't break the solder joint from the bezel strip. So ideally, you would use hard solder, medium solder, and then very soft solder. So it's really important to know what solder chips you're buying whenever you do buy solder chips. Once you get the hang of soldering, solder chips are really nice. It is important to use those three whenever you have something more intricate that's being soldered multiple times. My next tip is to make sure that there's no gap between the metal. So your solder will not flow if you have a gap between the metal. So a good way to make sure that there's no gap is to hold it up to the light. So I like to use my window back there if I am soldering a ring if I can see through the joint if I can see any light coming through then it's not close enough and your solder won't flow if that happens with your bezel strip and your back plate just take your bezel wire and some sandpaper and do a figure eight motion and just keep testing it until you don't see any light underneath the bezel strip okay so my next tip is to use a great stand so I love my soldering blocks, but it's not for every project. And again, this one is personal preference. I know people who don't like using these, but for me, there are some pieces that I could not make without it. So this is the soldering grate and it just stands on my bench and I put the piece up here and heat from the bottom. So this is helpful whenever I'm trying to solder the bezel strip onto the back plate because I find that whenever I am trying to solder a bezel strip onto a back plate on a soldering board, I end up overheating it almost every single time because I'm trying to get the solder on the inside inside to flow out, I end up creating that gap in the bezel strip because I heated it too much. So yes, this was a game changer for me when it came to learning and yeah, I could not live without it. Okay, this is a bonus tip. I wish I would have been confident enough to do this earlier on because there were many times that this happened to me and I scrapped it and started over when I could have just fixed my work. Whenever you solder your bezel strip onto your back plate, sometimes your bezel strip solder 
will break open if you overheated the back plate. If that happens and you're working with a non-decorative bezel, just a plain bezel strip, just flat, just cut another piece of bezel strip and place it over that gap and use your solder paste to solder that new strip onto your bezel cut. Obviously this is gonna create like a huge lump in the side, but just take a file or a grinding wheel and you can just grind it right back down and you would never know. So I hope that helps because that's happened to me soldering the back plate on, soldering the ring shank onto the back plate meaning I was almost completely done and I remember junking projects because of that. So just take extra bezel wire, solder it over the gap and file it down. Okay, so I just thought of another tip for soldering bezel wire onto a back plate. So the very first ring that I ever made, I soldered my bezel wire. It wasn't a decorative piece of bezel wire. It was just a normal flat sheet or a normal flat strip. I wrapped my bezel wire around my stone and I soldered it together and then I soldered it on the plate upside down. So whenever it came time to set my stone, my stone didn't really fit in that bezel cup anymore. So whenever you're not working with decorative wire where you can obviously tell which side's the top and which side's the bottom, use a sharpie and draw a little arrow pointing down to the side that needs to be soldered to the plate so that you don't do what I did. I hope these help. I know that when you get far in experience, you forget how hard some of the beginning stages were and I will never forget how hard this was for me. And now soldering is second nature. So if you're struggling with it, don't get discouraged. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. And if you have any tips that you can give, leave them in the comments as well. And yeah, I hope these help.